Hello and welcome to my first tutorial on YouTube. If you are here only for the wallpaper blur script, then skip to the time slot shown on the screen right now, or in the description below. This is going to be a very noob friendly video as I'm going to show you how to get VMutil set up, albeit a very minimal one, but it's still going to be more than enough to get you started. The reason why I'm doing this is because when I wanted to get started with VMutils, there were no videos that would hold the hands of a newbie in the Unix world. I learned from Zebra, whom scripts I am actually using in this video, and one of the scripts is written partially by my friend Tudurom, so shout out to them. Without any further ado, let's get started. First of all, we are going to download the programs that we are going to use in the video. Let's start off by downloading a terminal emulator. I prefer URXVT, but you can get whatever you want. We also need to download Git, just so we are able to get VM utils onto our computers later, and wget, which is a script that we are going to use to download a wallpaper later on. To install VMUtils, we are going to need a program named Make. There are multiple programs that let you set your wallpaper, but this one supports the on-demand blur, which is what we are looking for. The last program we need before downloading VMUtils is SXHKD. This program lets you assign a key combination to different scripts and commands. It is going to be crucial for our setup. The way VMUtils works is that it is a collection of scripts that are capable of configuring and controlling your X environment, and the easiest way to call those scripts is to assign them to different key combinations. After having all this done, we are going to download all VMUtil repositories using git. We are going to download this inside our home directory. When this is done, we are going inside core and opt, and we are going to run the sudo make install command. This is going to make those scripts globally available to us. The script inside the contrib are always going to be located in the home directory, as long as you don't move them. When this is done, I suggest you download some config files from a github so you can get started. I will do that right now. We are going to copy the x resources and x init rc into our home directory. After that, we are going to copy sxhkdrc into home slash dot config slash sxhkd and the, the dot color directory into the home directory. Now, to understand what those files and folders you just copied a few moments ago do, I will explain everything to you about them right now. The that X resources file is a config file keeping all the settings for URXVT, my terminal emulator of choice. The .exinitrc is a config file that decides what scripts and programs run at the start of your graphical session. The .colors directory is simply a pack of scripts that dictate the color of my terminal. This pack is read by the X resources config file. The sxhkdrc is the main component of our setup. This is the config file for the key binding manager. Inside here you can see all the key bindings I set up, so you can have a bare minimum of a Windows Manager up and running. If we take a look in here, we can see the way our window manager, or the lack of one, is going to act. For example, if you look at the way we move a window to the center of the screen, it's nothing more than a key binding that is calling a script in the background. The script we are calling is situated inside the contrib directory in our home folder. Let's take a look at xinitrc. As I said before, this is the config file that decides what is going to run at the start of the x environment. On the first line, we decide the resolution of the screen. Then, we are running a script that is going to take care of the windows focusing. Because it has an AND sign at the end, it runs in the background. The next script we are seeing on the list is actually the blur script. This one is pretty responsible about how the screen is getting blurred when there are windows open. These are the most important lines in your xinitrc file. 
Now let's take a look at how the blur script works. The blur script is nothing more than an infinite loop running in the background and monitoring the status of the windows. If the number of open windows is greater than zero, then each set root is run with a blur parameter. Otherwise, a non-blurred version of the same wallpaper is set. Speaking of wallpapers, let's download one. I'm going to use the wget command to download an image from Reddit. After downloading it, I am going uh, to rename it to wall.jpg or jpg and save it to my home directory so our blur script is going to pick it up right away. After all this is done, we're going to write start x to put up the graphical interface. And voila, everything is working as intended. As you can see, I can move the windows without any problem. I can even resize them if I want to. Everything works just fine, and when I close the window, the blur in the background disappears. If I open another window, it reappears. This works even if a window that I open is not a terminal. For example, if I open one of my file managers named Tunar. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to express your feelings about this video in a comment or a vote down below. I will upload weekly videos like this on Saturdays, so see you next time. Have fun tinkering.